This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today I'm continuing my series in 3D within Photoshop. And we started with CS6, and I'm now using Photoshop CC, but the same features that I'm going to be covering today still apply to Photoshop CS6 Extended with the 3D capabilities. In my previous segment on 3D, we talked about various types of lights within the 3D model. We looked at infinite lights, we looked at point lights, we looked at spotlights. But there was one type of light that we didn't cover, and that's an image-based light. And that's the topic of our discussion today. So I've extruded a 3D object here, starting with some text. And if I grab the Move tool and click within the scene here and start to move it around, you can see some reflecting lights that seem to be coming from somewhere on this text. And they've got a sort of a pattern to it. And as we move the text around, you can see that the highlights move as if that light is coming from a different source than the one individual infinite light in our scene. And as it turns out, this is actually the image-based light that we're seeing here. We can see the image-based light if we look in the 3D panel and switch to the environment. And here within the properties panel, now at the top of the panel, we see a section for IBL, which is image-based light. We can see the texture and it's shown here as a small thumbnail and it's essentially a dark gray rectangle with some white spots on it. We can see the image-based light is projected onto a sphere and this is the representation of it and it actually surrounds our 3D model. Now we have some adjustments here. We can adjust the intensity of this image-based light right here and I'm simply going to click on the word intensity and drag to the left and the right. And you can see as I dial this up and down, it affects the amount of ambient light, although this is not ambient light. This is an image-based light. So it really is going to be dependent on the contents of this texture. Now we can see this texture if we click the small icon right here and choose Edit Texture. We'll click on OK. And here is our image-based light. So we've got this series of bright spots and some farther apart bright spots down here. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. And these are being projected onto a sphere that is then shining onto my scene. So that's where we're getting these little spotlights from in a circular pattern because it's wrapped around the scene. Now we can change this image-based light to be whatever we want. And sometimes it's useful to set the image-based light to a texture that has the colors and tones from the actual scene in which we're placing our 3D object. So I've got the word Colorado here, and perhaps I want to put this text into a scene with a Colorado mountain sunset. Now what we can do is we can actually change this image-based light to be a picture of a Colorado mountain sunset. So we'll simply click on replace texture and here I've got a mountain sunset and I'll click on open. I'll go ahead and click through this and now we've got the mountain texture. It's a little bit too bright but we can dial it down and then if I go back to the scene you can see that we've simply got the mountain texture colors with the sunset sky that are highlighting the 3D object. So now we could put this into a background and in fact if we return to the environment and we scroll down to the bottom of the properties panel there's a button here to set IBL as background. We can do that just to see what's happening here. And now we'll go back to the scene. So here we've got the text set on a scene and we're actually using the same scene as a light to highlight our text. So this is great because we don't have to go around trying to match the colors 
of our 3D object to the scene, we simply are using the scene to color the 3D object. Now, there are a few other tricks for working with image-based lights. We'll go back to the Environment section, and here in the Properties panel, we'll once again click this small thumbnail and choose Reset IBL. We'll click through this, and that gives us our initial image-based light back. But look, we've still got the background set. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here, and here in the background section, we'll click this small thumbnail and remove the texture. And now we're back to the simply blank gray background. Let's go ahead and add another texture. Here at the top of the Properties panel, we'll choose Replace Texture once again, and this time I'll choose an interesting texture with an industrial scene of some pipes with a blue color cast. I'll click on Open, and here we can see the image in the background, and we can see it cast onto our text. If we go back to the scene, we can see now that the image-based light is actually being picked up and almost reflected in the text. And in fact, if we move this around, we can see there is an actual live reflection going on of the light into the 3D object as we move the 3D object around. We'll go back to the default view, and there you have it. Image-based lights within Photoshop CC and Photoshop CS6. With image-based lights, you can add an additional touch of realism to your 3D models and integrate them more effectively into your composites. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of information there related to photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.